You're listening to the Agroganic podcast brought to you by Agroganic Consulting. I'm Frederick, and today I'm joined by our head agronomist, Hans Henrik Frisbeth. Welcome, Hans Henrik. Thank you for letting me attend. Yes, so um, we have previously talked about all this. Uh, differences in development of uh, winter oil seed rape and different development stages and how to approach the upcoming or already applied growth regulator. So how does this uh, correspond to um, our challenging of uh, volunteer cereals in the rape seed, but also the application of different broadleaf herbicides? Well, there's a because of the situation in uh, this autumn. There's a, there's a huge difference in uh, in the emergence of uh, this uh, rapeseed, which is seeded. Some is very small, some is very big, and when you have it like this, it it, it it's always very complicated to uh, to treat uh, against volunteers in uh, rapeseed, and it's also uh, very difficult to make the broadleaf uh, treatment uh, with uh, herbicides because of the sizes of the of the rape. Um, but if we have to say something, it's it's always uh, with uh, volunteers of uh, waste grain and uh, with regulators, it's always uh, possible to mix uh, these herbicides and then to put this application into one uh, to one drive. Yeah. But so in general, it's very crop safe to tank mix regulators together with uh, grass weed herbicides in your. And all other, field. and all other for that uh, matter. Uh, and when you come to the broadleaf, where you start using this uh, Belka or uh, Aulex, um, it's it's uh, it gets more complicated to mix these uh, products. Uh, you, where you have to be very aware of what you're doing. Where you actually can only uh, do something with insecticides together with this Belka to control these uh, broadleaf weeds. Yeah, and this is because of this auxine hormone effect from the Arilex active um, herbicide, which is inside the Belka um, formulation. But at the moment, uh, because of the, the 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 situation in this autumn, where we've had extreme weather conditions, uh, we've had a lot of rain in uh, some very short periods. It's created a lot of uneven uh, rapeseed fields, and um, controlling these uh, broadleaf weeds uh, with Belka, uh, it's it's very uh, it's very um, it's very sensitive. So if you have uh, too many small plants, uh, you can't, uh, or the, at least the risk of making a damage on these plants is, is, is quite big. And what is the characteristics of some of these um, Belka herbicide damaged rapeseed plants? Well, mostly you see it in the spring where, uh, where it, uh, it, uh, it, it creates the main shot as more or less an umbrella. You know, it makes, uh, it makes the head uh, of, the, of the rapeseed plant go out of the side. Yeah, so the uh, flowering bud goes out of the yeah, side, kind yeah. of. It looks like it's been uh, given with some hormones, which it also has, yeah. but, uh, but it, it definitely looks like this. Okay. But this we need to be careful with uh, in, in the autumn. So, so to say uh, what you need to do uh, using uh, Belka, uh, is that you need to wait as long as possible. But of course, you always have the limit of uh, also being able to hit the broadleaf weeds which are in these uh, fields. Because if they get too dense, uh, then you also can't hit the weeds. Yeah, so you um, actually have large rapeseed plants covering or growing on top of some of your target yeah. broadleaf weeds. But what is important to remember is that the main the main plants, they have to be, they have to be at least best four, five, six leaves before we start using uh, Belka uh, in these fields. And this year it's a little difficult because of the wide range. Yeah, and also the, the very warm weather. So we are actually in many fields approaching or past this six leaf stage for the early seeded rape seed fields. So we also have a lot of uh, uh, broadleaf weeds growing in our rape seed fields. So where are we that now we are actually approaching uh, difficulties to apply our herbicide to killed our weeds, but we also having very large rapeseed plants. Uh, and in, in this perspective, what is most important? Should we go regulator and wait a week for the herbicide or should we go herbicide first and then the regulator? I think uh, I think the regulator is, is actually the most important thing because when you when you read six leaves uh, on this rapeseed, I think it's time to regulate to make to make sure that you maintain the main shot uh, on the ground. 
uh, the growing point and uh, there you can also use if you have grass weeds in the field or if you have volunteers from cereals you can mix this uh, with the, your growth regulator with no problem uh, so this is the first so we are actually past the stage where normally we say that first priority is to spray weeds and have a clean field and then do the regulator but we are actually having so fast and large growing rapeseed fields in some cases that is actually the regulator which goes first because we have very large risk of having two big plants or the risk of elongating um, main shoot that we will have a overwintering risk larger correct. than normal totally correct okay and uh, but uh, but it but there's a big spread you know these these uh, fields which were seeded in the very early days of august or late days of july they uh, they are of course very big and there it's always a question what to do but just do something uh, and then when we start to get into the middle of august we have a different picture we have more time uh, but it's still uh, in many cases it, it will be regulators with uh, with uh, herbicides against uh, volunteers of grass weeds or uh, or uh, cereals uh, that would be the first and then there would be a final uh, application of uh, bell carlata when the uh, rapeseed has a sufficient size so in the rapeseed fields where we struggle with the uh, grass weed problems, uh, we apply what is the approach, one or two herbicides, grass weed herbicides in autumn, do we follow up with a spring herbicide? Have you already planned that or what is your normal uh, experience? In, in the Baltics it's normally, uh, if we have to do something about this, we normally do it in the autumn and uh, when we get to spring, before we get a chance to get there, it's very difficult to, to, to come and follow up uh, on this. But of course, if there is some extreme that we can do something to, of course we will do it in the spring. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your thoughts, Hans Hendrik. You have listened to the Aquaganic podcast, where we change farming for good.